we talk about the brain running the body, but the brain's going to do a much better job of running the body when the heart is engaged and when we're in, you know, coherent states. It's important for us to be in our heart, to be in our joy, to be in our passion. Well, hello, everybody. Dr. Ron Overstein, president of Life Chiropractic College West, and welcome to another edition of our Life West Leadership Line. Um, I've got a wonderful guest today, a guy I've known for, I don't know how many years, Stu, we go way back, but I got Dr. Mm -hmm. Stu Bittman with us, um, you know, just stewing with Stu. Uh, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to have a great conversation for those of you that don't know, uh, Dr. Stu, um, graduated in 1986 from Los Angeles College of Chiropractic. We'll have to talk about that journey about how a, a Flushing's New York guy gets out to, if that's where you're from, gets out to LA, um, but uh, so 86, uh, practiced in South Lake Tahoe for 24 years, uh, never practiced any, anywhere else, retired after 24 years and went into the ministry, which we'll get into. Uh, started that actually two years before he retired. And then after 12 years in the ministry in 2019, uh, he's been talking all over the world, uh, you know, about chiropractic and the things that he's doing. Um, he's got a program that he does called Chiropractic from the Heart. Before that, before 19, he was speaking also at seminars in the U.S. and and uh, we've spoken together in Europe and different, different platforms. And, uh, you know, what you're going to find today from Dr. Stu is he's a man from the heart. He's a man of integrity and uh, he loves chiropractic. So, mm -hmm. so we're going to jump into it. And uh, welcome, my man. Good to see cool. you. Cool. It's great to see you, Ron. Thank you. You know more about me than I do. <laughs> well, That's good. Hey, sometimes it becomes a eulogy. I never want to have that happen. You know? <laughs> no, no. It's a little premature for that. I know. Just I know. Little... I love your background. I love the, the red and the blue. Thank you. I just... I feel like I'm back at the Grateful Dead kind of thing. You know? <laughs> the, the Grateful this is, Alive. Uh... This is one of my daughter's two rooms she still has in this house, even though she hasn't lived here for about twelve years. I don't, I don't quite understand. It's kind of like a, a museum. Uh, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting because you know, I think for you and I, um, when you know, when we left the house, whatever age it was, eighteen, nineteen. <laughs> Our room was gone, right? It was just like there, it was you, half gone before I left. That's true. <laughs> you, you came home, you slept on the couch, right? That's you know? right. But now I don't know, man. These kids have it. They, they have something wired in. You She's know? got they, a choice. She's got a choice of rooms to sleep in when she comes back. It's just it's so interesting. Isn't it? They've really they've worked the system very very well. I have to tell you, man. Indeed. But let's talk about like how, you know. Stu, let, let, I want to go back, you know, back before, like into, into the early 80s when you were looking at B, or whatever prompted you, you know, to get into chiropractic. What Share, share with us your journey of, you know, what, what we what we're Well, it's rather mundane, but I was working in the slot department at Harris Tahoe for about three years after I moved here to Lake Tahoe uh -huh. and uh, hurt myself on the job. And... Uh, my wife was dealing poker, and one of the regular players uh, on her game often was a, was a chiropractor. Everybody called him Doc. And so I went to Doc on a workman's cop case and was very impressed with what he did. And around that time, I was thinking I was uh, maybe wasting my time because I had had a bachelor's degree in biology and psychology and stuff. So... So anyway, I was impressed, like I said, and then he one day, actually it was his idea. He said, what are you doing with the rest of your life? And I said, I don't know. And he said, well, how, how about you go to chiropractic school and come work with me? And I said, cool. Okay. I mean, my dad had always seen a chiropractor for his back. So of course that was my orientation into it. And that's, that's where it all began. It didn't work out for me to work with the guy. But that's another story altogether. And yeah, it's not but you know what? I mean, you know, it's just, it's not mundane because it's like, you know, you know, here the here this guy is who sits at your wife's table and he's a regular at the casino. <laughs> hopefully he was winning. You know, he, he was hopefully he was withdrawing. You know, he was depositing. Well, <laughs> he was a better he was a better chiropractor than a poker than a, player. Than a, than a poker player yeah. yeah. Well, most of us are, aren't they? Aren't we? <laughs> um, but anyway, so, you know, here you are. And then, you know, you get a referral and he asks you the question, you know. And the question right. is, have you thought about being a chiropractor? What are you doing the rest of your life kind of deal? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the life pivoting, right? Or an inflection point, right? I will always be grateful, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yes. 
Absolutely. How'd you get to Tahoe, man? You're in the casino business? Uh, no, I just had to get out of New York City. Um, okay. You weren't wanted and, or anything, right? No. You, you no, didn't have like I was, the... I, uh, the I, 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 wanted, I wanted to get the heck out of there. I was st- <laughs> <laughs> standing on the subway one day and I looked down in a pool of my own sweat and looked at everybody's face and it was like, there's got to be something else. <laughs> And then so took- my brother and my brother and I took a little trip when I turned 21, I think, out to Tahoe, and uh, I fell in love with the area with a lot of things, and so yeah, so about six months later we moved here, and uh, with my life savings that lasted about three months, yeah, and so then I started working uh, in the casinos, and uh, took me three years to get out of there, but. So I, I'm grateful to chiropractic school for getting me out of there too. Yeah, that's right. that's yeah. Really cool. you followed your yeah. dream, you know. I mean, you yeah. know, you know, you knew you had to get out and look where it led you. I mean, it's just, it's just pretty cool, you know. It is. And then when you graduated, cool. you went right back to Tahoe, right? You knew you were going back. I did, and his practice had tanked pretty much because uh, he was heavily reliant on insurance, and that all had kind of gone away in the interim. So he, after about a month of working with him. He uh, he asked me if I wanted to buy his his practice, which to this day I'm not exactly sure what I bought, but I bought it. <laughs> there you go. There and you go. I was seeing about I think 15 people a day or something uh, on a good day, and uh, you know that 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 was my start. And then it took off, right? I mean, obviously. Then it took off. Where did where did you get led? Like, what turned you on? Obviously, you know. Um, I don't know. Maybe you were turned on when you walked out of school. I'm not sure, you know. So you're saying no. So so what, where was your inflection point? I See, I was the valedictorian. I was Joe Science. I Yeah, I mean, I – and I struggled with that. And, I, you know, and it quickly, it quickly became apparent that people didn't really care how much I knew, uh, certainly about things that didn't apply to them. So um, – I don't know. I think I was three years into practice and, and went to a Parker seminar. And I can't say I got a ton out of it. I was blown away. I was I was blown away by people's enthusiasm. I saw Sigafu speak. I walked out on him. <laughs> he, he started insulting the physical therapy. And I think I had just leased some beautiful high voltage galvanic ultrasound combination that I thought was the secret of health and life. And anyway, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready, but I went back about a year later and everybody seemed to change what they said, even though I'm well aware they didn't change what they said. Something happened to me in that interim period. And yeah, and I just, Ron, the only way I could describe it is even though I was, uh, had this firm basis of science, I always felt that was shaky ground and I always felt a, a, an emptiness like a hole in my chest, something big was missing. And that second Parker seminar began to fill it. And then I just, you know, just ran with it and <laughs> went everywhere that they were talking about philosophy. Yeah. Anyway, I think it's cool because Sigafus had a similar story walking out on Sid. Yeah. The first time he heard him speak. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, what's yeah. so cool is he was doing the same thing, you know, I mean, six people a day and, you know, doing every modality and never even thinking to adjust really, you know, and then right. he finally just pushed all his equipment down the stairs. Right. <laughs> you know, like literally down the stairs. And then, you know, right. he, he ended up building, you know, one of the biggest practices in the, in the United States. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, sometimes it just takes, you know, a revolution and, and when our educated is so is, is in the way. Right. Yes. I had a lot to get out of the way. Yeah. You know, you know, when I talk about being valedictorian, I'm not, I'm not bragging. <laughs> I mean, I, I was proud of it at the time, but you know, it, it was a lot more to unlearn. Yeah. Yeah. But sure. you should be proud of it, you know, cause Thank you. you know, I mean, that means that you're disciplined and, 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 and that same thing can take you where you need to go, you know, having the discipline. And the truth is, is that, you know, it was your will and strength that got you back to that second Parker. Mm-hmm. Right. Because otherwise right. you just would have been, you know, in bed and, with your equipment and just and the, you know, and the fact that I'd gotten like four new patients coming back from that first one, even though I didn't understand that was that was a lot for me yeah. at any one any one week. So yeah. you know, I, I'm not sure I went back with anything other than a, a, a mercenary. <laughs> hey, I want four new patients again. But <laughs> but again, little little was I to know that 
that it was, you know, going to be a completely different experience. Yeah. I love it, man. I love it. You know, and you know what, I think what happens, you know, I I know, you know, this, you speak all over the place, you know, people kind of lose their, they, you know, we never lose our mind. We lose our heart, you know, you know, because what you talked about that something on the inside changed, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and, and that really is the heart. And I love that you're, you know, what you're talking about with, you know, uh, chiropractic from the heart, you know, um, I think that's the key. You know, when you look at the success, it, we have to know what we know, right? Because that, mm-hmm. that that builds our confidence, right? And right. can help our competence. But you can have confidence and competence without a heart. And what's going to happen? You know, you could just, you know, you, there's no passion to play. You can be the best mm-hmm. ball player, right? And have the best competence and you're confident, but you don't like the game. Right. You're going to walk away, you know, or you're not going to have it. And and that's where the heart comes in, you know. So talk about that. Like, how'd your heart, like, let's touch on that and see, you know, what does it mean to you? I'm mean, obviously you, you named your program chiropractic from the heart. Mm-hmm. Well, I find the heart to be missing a lot in chiropractic. In fact, I think there should be a 34th principle, <laughs> yeah. especially with what we know now from heart math and from other things about how important the heart is, the, you know, we, we talk about the brain running the body, but the brain's going to do a much better job of running the body when the heart is engaged and when we're in, you know, coherent states. So, yeah, it's important for us to be in our heart, to be in our joy, to be in our passion. Um, mostly what I discovered uh, about the heart was, <laughs> again, on service trips that I did that i, I you was call, you uh, call them mission trips that's okay uh, you you okay i call <laughs> that's them okay. mission trips yeah, that's, that's okay. just that's just what they were called back then yeah, mission it's trips. like i'm thinking yes. robert de niro uh, mission, right? <laughs> you know, down in south yes. america yes and, and, and even though yes mission has a religious connotation but uh you know it, it, where i learned where the mission truly is by doing mission trips and that's right there right there in my office with my people and I also learned that everything I was looking for in practice boiled down to that one moment of interaction with that person on the table. And I and I wanted to relate to that person in that one moment from my heart rather than my head, because on the mission trips, I was deprived of head stuff. I, you know, we were going to Spanish speaking places and I didn't speak any Spanish at all. So I had to relate to people on a different level. I couldn't find out anything about them. I didn't know why they were there. I didn't know what was going to happen after. Uh, it was it was pure serving for the sake of serving. And I know we throw that term around a lot, but I had never really experienced it before. And it was because I had no time. <laughs> you know, we were dealing, we were adjusting a lot of people. And so I, it was the purest ex, you know, expression. It was the purest chiropractic I had ever experienced because we had to rely on the innate intelligence within the person because I I couldn't even be tempted to fix anything or to, you know, to attach to anything that I see now uh, is not very important. You know, what's important is that love and in that connection. And, you know, so in 10 seconds, I could look into somebody's eyes and feel more connected than when I talk to them for hours about stuff that, you know, it doesn't make as much of a difference to me, like yeah. like their opinion of me or even the results, because I, that's that's not my responsibility. So so for me, chiropractic from the heart is really chiropractic, not from the head. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Uh, so and what you said about knowing, you know, uh, how much do we need to know? You know, um, I know that the greatest doctor in the universe is inside of them. Uh, you know, that that's more than enough for me. And, and, and when you have to rely on that, because you can't apply any of your intellectual stuff, it, it, it taught me a lot, taught me a lot. Right. Well, yeah. You know, to the people who are, who are listening, you know, to our viewers, if you haven't been on a service mission trip, um, and those who have, if one of the greatest outcomes, Stu, is what you said, you know, when you walk away, it's like your heart is filled more than anything like your spirit is just filled and you know you've given so much right and people are are bringing something to you the next day that could be Mm -hmm. so meaningful to them and it might not you know it might be the value of it doesn't matter they're actually because you're taught you're taking care of people who might not have ever seen a doctor 
ever any kind of doctor because mm-hmm. you're not a chiropractor and you know what they get and then they bring their families back and they and you know and what they experience is incredible mm-hmm. but our experience is 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 the same you know like we're walking out change people right and um you know and and i don't know about i don't know about your experiences sorry to interrupt you but uh, (laughs) but um you know people who i would talk to when i would come back would say okay well the people are different uh they're they're more trusting they're whatever and and this all might be somewhat true but for me the, the key learning was i was different there I, I was fearless <laughs> yeah. because I was not attaching to anything that, that is less important. I, 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 so my goal coming back was to get myself in this place that I was in when I was in Panama and Costa Rica, um, yeah. not to go back and say it could never be like that because, you know, here we are in the United States, et cetera. That's what I mean when I just t- t- determined that the mission was in my office. And if I could be like that, if I could be if coming from my heart and be as non-attached, uh, it was obviously a challenge when people speak the same language, <laughs> yeah. but it was work it was, yeah. and it was my intention and my focus. So, yeah. And I, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it is work, but really it's, it's love, you know, it's like, you know, you can't get away from the table. Someone comes up like, you know, I go up to our students because, you know, we do service trips, you know, every quarter. Right. And, you know, we're going to Tongo, we're going to Mexico, we're going to India. And awesome. it's like, you know, I go I go by when I'm on those. If I go, um, I go up to them at the student table and I'll just say, you know, one of our interns say, did you have water? Oh, yeah, yeah. I go, when was the last time you urinated? And they will they have to the minute they have to think about it, I know they're not drinking enough right and so right. i send people over to give them water to keep because they can't get away once last time you, you ate right. i don't know you know and then you just can't get them off the table because they're just magnetically drawn and they got you know people right in front of them there's people in line back there you know it's just a it's really an interesting vibe that you do you create an energy with and the other people that are there and it's just becomes this vortex of service mm-hmm. and to me it's the most cleanest purest form of service that we could do I agree. I agree. Yeah. And, and yet, yes. So instead of coming back as, as some of them, my, my brothers and sisters did from the trips I went on, you know, they, they, they were depressed (laughs) because, you know, they, they were focused more on what was different at home, you know, and I, and I actually considered getting rid of my tables and my phone (laughs) and putting some black metal folding chairs like we had in Panama and, and stuff and, and, and hanging out with my mother in law and learning Yiddish. So, so I wouldn't speak the same language as, uh, you know, I, so I went through these crazy ideas in my mind and I, then I realized I'd still understand what the patients were saying because I would understand English. Right. So it probably wasn't worth it. But, uh, you know, so instead of that, again, I just worked on myself to, to get into my heart as much as possible, especially when I was with people. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Share with us something. Cause you know, you know, 24 years you practiced and then you, you know, two years before you retired, you started doing, uh, got in the ministry, right? And then you were doing that for 10 years after you retired for 12 years. Mm-hmm. Talk about that. Like what, what was, you know, what, how did that road come about, you know, and what were you looking for from that? You know, we were always looking for community and we found, uh, we have a, a unity center here that I had guest spoken at many times over the years. So I found the people very amenable to the, and I always only talked about chiropractic. I, I changed the wording around a little bit. Mm-hmm. So unity was a good fit for me because to me, they have the same basic principles as chiropractic does, obviously a little more spiritual based. So, so yeah, I, I fell into that and we were doing both and it was overwhelming to run a church, which we didn't really call it, but that's pretty much a good name for it. Um, and a chiropractic practice. And around that time, my hip, uh, was barking at me a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I made a decision that I thought I would never make. I I thought I'd be like, you know, a Herb Reaver collapsing over somebody in my nineties when I was adjusting them. Um, but you never know, you never know what's going to happen next folks. So, uh, I, I, also 
uh, told myself that the ministry aspect, the, the uh, that I would be addressing people's subluxations at a more fundamental level. Like to me, the cause of subluxation mostly is in consciousness. Uh, and so uh, that's what I told myself when I decided to leave chiropractic and, and go full time into the ministry, which again was kind of a surprise to me. And um, just, just really quickly, um, almost right away, my wife and I, my wife who was my office manager and, then was my the co minister. Uh, we've done everything together. Um, we noticed that people were not making the same kind of changes in their life as we were used to seeing in in practice. And I was sitting at a seminar in Europe, talking to a friend and telling him about this. And he looked at me and he said, "Well, they're not getting adjusted." <laughs> mm-hmm. And I said, "Duh." So anyway, I attempted several things to uh, give people the opportunity to get adjusted in my ministry. But uh, yeah, it wasn't the same. So I learned. I learned a lot about chiropractic and the value of the chiropractic adjustment by not doing it for yeah. 12 years. Yeah. 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 No, it I get a that. big piece, a big piece, folks. Yes, it's uh, consciousness and the chiropractic adjustment are, are you know, yeah. they're Absolutely. both they're both important. Absolutely. You know, back in the day, you know, I practiced in San Diego for 36 years or something like that. And um, Terry Cole Whitaker, you know, mm-hmm. who started, I mean, I don't know if she started the unity movement or not, but she certainly was huge and she was out of San Diego. So we would go on, go yeah. and, you know, hear her talks. And um, it was like, she was, she was more religious science, which is a cousin of unity, but yes. Oh, oh, is it? Okay. Yes. Yeah. I, okay. All right. Well, I thought it was unity, but, but, uh, but I, I felt like I was at a chiropractic seminar when I would, when I would go listen to her. Cause you know, it really is about reconnecting, you know, man and woman, the, the physical with man and woman, the spiritual. Right. And, you know, when we talk about, you know the chiropractic adjustment and what that does you know and how that you know frees us up on a on a um i don't know what you call it but on a radio frequency level whatever you want to call it you know the electrical mm-hmm. chemical magnetic reaction of the body and it allows us to just you know emanate you know i just saw something recently i was reading a journal uh two days ago you know and it was talking about how how the body how it, how the cells can communicate this is from a like a medical journal, how the cells can communicate to other cells outside the body. Hmm. And I'm thinking like, man, they don't know that. Like, this is like something that's, you know, you know, and it was theoretical. They were talking about the theory of it, but now they're actually showing that. Right. And they still have to dive into more research to prove it. And I'm going like, my God, hmm. you know, we're constantly spending time trying to prove what's already <laughs> there. You know, what they, right? what they knew thousands and thousands of years ago. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So, <laughs> a- a- absolutely absolutely keeps, a, keeps us busy it, yeah it does i know it does but it's just amazing when you, when you when you look at that and you start saying you know my gosh you know we take this you know i, I love this thing when they call it evidence-based you know i call it evidence-informed because evidence-informed means that you know the 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 patient is number one Right. And then it's the research and then it's the the clinician, you know, so to speak. Right. If you look at the three bubbles, right, where evidence based means it's the research has to prove it first. And then it's the mm-hmm. patient's experience. You know, and I'm thinking like, my God, you know, it's it's you know, it's all about the patient experience. It's all about what they have. And the minute we start moving into that spiritual experience of, the, you know, the spiritual beings that we truly are. I, I don't know. I get frustrated too because it's kind of like, yeah, you go to synagogue on Saturday, you go to you go to the mosque, you go to you know church on Sunday or whatever day during the week, mm-hmm. or every day it doesn't matter, you know. But then when you walk out of there, we're no longer <laughs> spiritual beings, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, you know, you've heard we're human beings having a spiritual experience. No, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. I like to think we're spiritual beings having a spiritual experience. The parts of it that we don't like we call our human experience that's my new definition but yes i i I agree and i think that's what was missing in my ministry people were uh there mostly to be inspired or entertained or something um chiropractic patients tend to be more motivated to actually change 
Yeah, that's that's my that's my judgment. Anyway, or not but, not looking for the one shot in the arm and, and be gone, right? They're they're looking to make it their life. Yes, yeah. like you're saying, to to not have a spiritual experience at the chiropractic office and then go out and you know hopefully not go out and and be exactly the same person and make the same choices. And and, and I'm sure you, um, I know you saw what I saw. People would make better choices, you know, without the benefit of me telling them to make these choices, which is you know. <laughs> probably wouldn't have worked as well. Exactly. They, they got a glimpse. Yeah. And that's our lifelong dream, isn't it? It's to it's to have people start start living from the inside out, right? Start start trusting that inner voice, start, you know, experience that spiritual life, right? So mm-hmm. to speak, you know, that you know, uh a spiritual being living a spiritual life, so to speak, right? Yes. To allow that to be freed so that it could be speaking more and be talking more and be more clear and they get more connected neurologically, you know it's going to happen right absolutely absolutely so it really moves away from healing you know when we talk about healing back pain you know leg Mm -hmm. pain which is all important stuff listen no one wants to feel crappy but it moves (laughs) away from that into the you know what's more important man i i don't want to go get to to starbucks and spend money on a a cup of black coffee not that that's bad you know it's just that you know i want to be able to go in and have an experience right right it moves away from curing maybe it is moving actually toward healing because i know the word healing comes from the same word as whole so if we're talking to people about people being whole and people being already whole you know all we do is remove interference so that wholeness can express itself and uh, yeah and certainly not just on a physical level and certainly not just on a back level yeah. so yes i think that's the greatest gift we have to offer the yeah, world it is uh, absolutely and you can't reach those people because you know you talk to, you talk to chiropractors and they might think be thinking or someone even listening to the podcast you know the webcast right now or podcast might be thinking yeah but you know i got people who come in with you know with headaches and neck pain well you can't even get them to the point of even of even opening up until you get, address certain things right oh, God. You know, to, to move them forward that's part and, of the journey right and like you said nobody wants to feel crappy so i I, wow. I i i yeah you know i have absolute acceptance and love and and honor and respect for every chiropractor on the planet because mostly because i was every chiropractor on the planet i i went through all of those phases and and, and through all of them i really felt like i was doing the best i could and that I was helping people. Yeah. Right. So uh, that's a whole, we could talk for hours about what I get frustrated about, which is, you know, all the infighting that I know you've experienced. And there's, no need, seen. There's, there's no need for it. You know, mm-hmm. there, there, there really isn't, you know, we, we do a better job collaborating with people outside our profession in the, in the, in the quote unquote health space. Right. You know, you know, um, than we do with ourselves. Absolutely. You know, internally, Absolutely. you know, and, and I, listen, I was talking with a buddy of mine. He's, he's an instructor and he's a good friend of mine, Jeff Schulten. Jeff is up in uh, uh, Alberta. He's a, he just finished his presidency of NUCA. He's been practicing just amazing practitioner, amazing person. And Jeff's thing is like, you know, he does upper cervical, but he said everyone should have like three, three chiropractors. You know, you should have an upper cervical. This is a this is an upper cervical chiropractor. You should have someone taking full spine. You have someone doing doing you know mm-hmm. sports, whatever. I mean, it's like you know, we should all be working together, right? And, I, and, I love and, that. Yeah, it's so beautiful, you know. And I got to tell you, I got I have I have my go to people. You know, mm-hmm. if you're asking my top people that I would see, you know, you know, you know, I got my top people, I got my upper cervical people. I anytime I see Donnie Epstein, I'm getting entrained, you know, and I don't care if I just had an adjustment just before that or not, right? You know, it's sure. like the people in your life that you're going to, you know, you, you know, the top five healers, whatever you want to say, but we should all have these chiropractors mm-hmm. that we send out to and and not worry about us, you know. You know? See, and it's and and then we only separate when it's chiropractic from the head. Yeah. Because in the heart, we are all, you know, we all have a similar intention. We're all trying to help people. We're all trying to improve people's lives, however we define that. You know, it's 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 a symptom of head-based stuff when we think we, uh, uh, my my diagnosis of that is we, we're, we're trying to make ourselves more certain and sure about what we're doing by making other people wrong or, or bad. And that, you know, it doesn't work. Plus, it keeps us separate, and it's, I believe it has stopped us from really stepping up into our birthright as a profession of what's possible, you know, because we haven't managed to get together. So, 
Counting on you for that, man. You're in a well. Good I will tell you this, man. Our students are coming out. They go to they go they do service trips. You know they do this stuff. We missed it for a couple of years, but now we're back on. You know, and it's like they're different people. I mean, they are they're they're beat up while they're there. We just did one that was a <laughs> seven day seven days. So we usually do three. It was a seven day trip in two different locations, right? And they were just beat. I mean, I mean, they were, saw a lot of some of these students. You know, in in the seven days, they saw you know, 800 to a thousand people. Right. You know, and they were, just, they'd never, this is a, they could be, you know, a 10th quarter student. Mm-hmm. And when they got back, they come in and say, doc, I want to go to Tonga. Can I get on the Tonga trip? Can I get, <laughs> because they, they, it's that once again, that spiritual space mm-hmm. that draws us. Right. Because they, they don't want to do it just to touch. They want to do it because of the feeling that they had. Right. Mm-hmm. And like you said, if we can, you could do that in your own office. You know, yes, yes, it's, it's not the amount of people you're seeing. It's the space that you're in. Right. And absolutely. Yeah. And recreating that gratitude, recreating yeah. all that, you know, and remembering that people are essentially the same, yeah. you know, whether they're in Tonga or in your office, you know, they might have, we might have a few more layers of stuff around here, but just, just, you know, th- that's something we could dedicate ourselves to. That's right. So. That's right. That's yeah. exactly it. I love it, man. Hey, man, we we have hit that mark. I mean, crazy. 30 minutes goes by really Wow, fast, that's man. crazy. It that does. It does. It's fun. Stu, I want to yes. thank you. I want to thank you for, you know, listen, 36 years, whatever it's been in, in chiropractic, you know. Um, you know, and I know you got a lot more uh lot more tire, you know, a lot more rubber on the tire. Yes, right? a lot of tread. Right? Yeah, just keep the rubber on the road, and uh, and I'm just thank I'm thankful that you're out there, you know, speaking to people. Well, that the, you know our audience would know how to get a hold of you, but you know through the things that we've thrown on the bottom. Um, but check Stu out. You got a podcast, right? That goes out. Uh, uh, it's called Stu on this. Yep, Stu on this. I love it. I love it. I kind of <laughs> like stewing with Stu, but I love it. Stu on All this. Right. Stu like and Chew too. on this. I love I it. Should have talked to you it. about the title before. No, you know, no, 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 no. That's just my head talking. <laughs> no, no, no. No, you got the perfect title. But you know, they'll they'll be able to reach you through that and be able to hear you more. And and uh, you know, thank Great. you, man. Thank you for all you're doing and thank, thank you, you. For, for leading your leading your, you know, do, following your path, to be honest with you. You know. Boom. In practice, into into the ministry, you know, you know, oh, never leaving chiropractic and and then, you know, but staying and becoming stronger and, and the, taking the lessons you've learned and being able to teach mm-hmm. them to people so that so that they can be better human agents of change. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I love it. So thank you, my brother. I appreciate you so much. Appreciate you, too. It's great to see you, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, mm-hmm. And to our viewers, thank you. You know, thanks for coming. You know, week in and week out, you know, we drop these uh, life leadership lines uh, every other week. The opposite weeks, we do a Life by Life West with my, myself and my wife, um, Dr. Mary. And, uh, you know, we're having a blast with this. We've got so many viewers. But, you know, I, I like I always say, there are people out there that need to hear this. You know, there are people out there who need to reconnect. And so don't keep this just to yourself. You know, send it out to four or five people, you know, the link and let them see it and let them uh you know, let them experience it, whether they do, if it's their time right now, they'll listen. If it's not, that's okay too. Just like with Dr. Stu, you know, when he went to Parker this first time, it wasn't his time. Um, but, you know, just share it. We appreciate it so much because it really makes a difference in people's lives. And ultimately it makes a difference in humanity. So um, mm-hmm. until we come back at you again for our next leadership line, uh, just keep loving those around you. Keep hugging, you know, those people that you care about and uh, make sure that you know that, you have the power to change your world. And that's really what matters, the world that's inside of you, because that will change everything. So um, love you. Appreciate you. Thanks again, Stu, for being with us. And uh, to our viewers, we'll see you next time, on uh, whether it's a Life Leadership Line or a Life by Life West. See you later. 